Now I'm going to discuss the rank transform and also the related tide rank transform. Rank and in particular tide rank are really important transformations in statistics. They come up all over the place in correlations, in non-parametric t-tests and ANOVAs. You'll see tide ranks come up quite often in this course and in statistics. Okay, so let's start with a set of numbers. This is just a collection of five numbers. We have 4.0011, one minus 10, four, and some ridiculously huge number. I don't even know what this number is or what it means. This is like, you know, the number of atoms in a glass of water or something like that. Okay, and so this is the set. This is the rank transform of the set. So what do these numbers mean? They, it looks kind of weird at first if you're not familiar with rank transform. You know, it kind of looks like we just rounded this first number, but then somehow the one turned into a two, minus 10 turned into a one, the four dropped down to three, and this gigantic number just became a five. So what is actually going on here? Well, the way that the rank transform works is you sort all of the numbers in your original set according to their relative positions on the number line. So you have the negative numbers all the way to the left, and then the positive large numbers all the way to the right. And then you number the numbers according to their relative position. So minus 10 is the furthest number to the left on the number line. It is the most negative number. So it gets one. And then it's a, it gets a position of one, an ordinal position of one. And then we have the next number in this set going towards the right on the, on the real number line would be one. So it actually gets the number two. So this really isn't a the number two, this is the position two. So it's the second smallest number. And then this is the third smallest number, the fourth smallest number. And this huge, huge, huge number just uh, ends up boiling down to five. And again, this is not really the number five. This is the ordinal position five. This just tells us that this number is the fifth largest number, the number most to the right on the number line, within this set here. So there are a few things to note about the rank transform. One is that the rank transform is nonlinear. So this is a nonlinear transformation of the original numbers. And that's already really easy to see because four and 4.001 are really, really close to each other. And yet they are here, they're one index apart. On the other hand, 4.001 and this ridiculous number are really, really far away from each other. This number is huge and this number is relatively insignificant. And yet their, their rank transforms are still only one index apart from each other. So it's a nonlinear transformation. That's one thing to know. It is a lossy transformation. That means that we are actually losing information. There is information in this original data set that is no longer present in the rank. So it's a lossy transformation, and it's lossy in part because of the third property, the third feature, which is that it is a non-invertible transformation. So once you get here to the rank, you have no idea what the original numbers were. It's not possible to reconstruct the original numbers purely based on knowing their ranks. So for example, we don't know if this fifth number, if, you know, if I only give you, so let's say I tell you that the fourth number was 4.001, you wouldn't know whether the fifth number is a huge number or the fifth number could also be 4.002. All right, so those are three features. These are not bugs. These are features of the rank transform. It is nonlinear, it is lossy, and it is non-invertible. These don't make it bad. They're just features. The rank transform turns out to be really important in statistics as I mentioned in the opening slide, in uh, correlations, in, in t-tests, in non-parametric statistics, you will see the rank transform quite often. Now, what do we do if we have repeated numbers in here? So for example, let's imagine this other set where we have these three numbers are all unique, so one minus 10 and four, but then we have three here repeating. Uh, so we have the number three twice in this set. So how do we come up with ordinal ranks for this set of numbers? 
Well, for the middle three numbers, and by you know, middle three, I'm, I'm actually just referring to their spatial locations here, not that they're in the middle in, in terms of the ranks. But for these three numbers, it's really easy. It's unambiguous. This is definitely the first number. This is definitely the fifth. And this is definitely uh, the second. The question is, one of these has to be three, and one of them has to be four. So what do we do? Who do we assign three to, and who do we assign four to? Well, the answer from a tied rank perspective is to take the average, not the average of these numbers, because it's obviously just going to be three, but the average of their ranks. So the ranks here are tied for third position and fourth position. And so therefore, the tied rank solution here is to call them both 3.5. So in fact, the rank, the tied rank transform of this set of numbers is 3.5. 2, 1, 5, and 3.5. So we're missing an exact 3, and we're missing an exact 4. So this is called tied rank, and it's basically just a little adjustment to the rank transform for dealing with ties in the data set. And of course, you can also see that the tied rank operation is identical to the rank operation when there are no ties, when there are no repeated identical numbers in the set. So in this video, I introduce you to the rank transform and the adjustment to the tied rank transform.